Each year, 70 million Americans receive pain medication after surgery, with 1 in 10 patients admitting they become addicted. As a professional athlete, Gabrielle Reese is no stranger to pain. And recently, after a knee replacement surgery, she made a personal decision not to take any painkillers. Gabby joins us today along with orthopedic surgeon Dr. Scott Sigmund to talk about Choices Matter, a new initiative educating both parents, patients, and physicians about their options post-surgery. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Now, Gabby, knee problems are common for athletes, especially volleyball players, I can sure. imagine. So what led you to finally have surgery? I was in uh, pr pretty good discomfort for 15 years, but when I lost a uh, function that I couldn't PT out of or, you know, work my way out of, I finally uh, obliged <laughs> and got the full knee replacement three months ago. Wow. And, um, and that's how I got involved with this campaign with Choices Matter. To your point, it's really to empower the patients, if, if it's the parents maybe even of a young athlete, uh, things like that, they can go to planagainstpain.com. There's a survey and a questionnaire. They can uh, print it out, bring it to their doctor, and have a conversation about Besides opiates, and I am concerned about after surgical pain and discomfort, what's available to me um, to make me feel comfortable and, and get through that time of pain. When I was in the hospital, I did in fact take uh, for two days a very strong anti-inflammatory with a painkiller. But once I got out uh, is when I kind of took it on the chin and, and did it by did it on my own, but there really is other alter alternatives, and, and uh, Dr. Sidman can speak to that. He's been doing treatments for two years um, that are alternatives to the opiates and having great success with that. And Gabby, you mentioned a plan, and I think that is really good to do with your doctor. So Dr. Sidman, what kind of dialogue should we have with our doctor, and what are kind of the alternatives that uh, Gabby just mentioned there? Yeah, great question, Courtney. So remember, I mean, you know, Gabby's a professional athlete. She's in amazing shape, and she was able to power through this based on true grit, but you don't have to do that. There are mm -hmm. great options that are available. I perform total knee replacements. There are great new oral anti-inflammatories, intravenous or IV anti-inflammatories that are available, and we can also inject medication directly into the knee where many of our patients are getting 24 to 72 hours worth of pain relief. So Courtney, if I, for example, did a, a knee replacement on you, we would do that at 7 30 in the morning and by 1 o'clock in the afternoon I fully expect you to be walking in the hallway reporting minimal pain wow. so there are great options that are available now you, again you may not know what questions to ask for sure but this planagainstpain.com website can provide you the tools so you can go to your doctor and say hey doc I don't want to be 1 in 10 right? right 1 out of 10 patients that undergo elective surgery are becoming dependent on opioids and we have to stop this opioid crisis it's really horrible across our country so we can all do our part and by really, you know, promoting yourself and your own concerns with planagainstpain.com, you could ask your doc, hey doc, what options are there outside of opioids? All right, keep that dialogue going. Thank you so much, guys. You heard him say planagainstpain.com there. I appreciate you joining us, Gabby and Dr. Sigmund there. Hope you feel better soon, Gabby. Thank you, Courtney. I will. Thank you so much, Courtney. Take All care. Right, to find out more information, you can log on to our website, fox4morningblend.com. We've all heard about Botox, right? You might even get injections, but do you know what it really is? Coming up, we've got answers from a doctor. Stick around.